Hello and welcome to Hay River Speedway in the Northwest Territories for race 3 of 9 of the Canada Division. This recently rejuvenated 3 eighths of a mile dirt oval received funding from former local Hark racer John Christchurch, and a crowd of fans have gathered to watch the inaugural race weekend at the upgraded venue. The Hark Canada Series will be racing 150 laps today and will be led to the green flag by Texan Lucina Gallo. Small Nozomi will start to her outside and make up an all-female row number one. There's the green flag. Gallo would get the better start and pull ahead down into turn one, but she's got Nick Pericles on her heels looking to the bottom of the racetrack. There's a huge bump on the exit of turn two. Pericles got thrown up the track and almost tagged Gallo. Pericles with a better run through three and four and he'll lead lap number one. Max Anderson has had a lightning start and is looking to crack the top three. He actually takes a bump there from Tyler Faber but holds onto the car and still makes the pass. Nice car control there. Lots of tight racing further back as well. A few rows of three wide racing in fact. It's a lot easier carrying momentum on the top side of the track. It's generally a bit of a smoother surface up there and you can get better drives down the short straightaways. Spencer Fullerton finds his Firebird boxed in between the Camaros of Brock and Collins. Fullerton qualified poorly but last time out at Edmonton he managed to win despite starting from the last row of the grid. Zachary Fitzwater Sr. is forced to start from the rear for, for this race due to dumping Emmett Vanson back at Edmonton. He's also on probation for this race. As the points leader, it'll be important for him to stay out of trouble, but so far he hasn't made any progress up through the field. Gala wants the lead back. She's closed in and makes her move to the inside. Pericles' car slips up a bit and he has to catch it on the high side. She actually gently rubbed into Pericles on the back stretch. Looks like it's going to be a raw race with a classical Rubens Racing mentality. Two laps later, Gallo would try again. Nearly hooks the 84 down the back straightaway, but is finally going to make the move stick. Tony Tavolaris is ha having a solid start to this race, just outside of the top 10. Down into three, Bouchard and Sang both make huge lungs lunges to his inside line, and they both make it stick. Tavolaris just trying to hold on right now, it looks like. Oh, he runs it wide into turn one and slaps the wall there. Takes a chunk out of his right side. That's definitely not going to help his handling. He seems to be struggling for grip a little bit right now, or he's struggling to adapt to the changing track conditions. He's had some, let's say, skill issues in the past, and he's actually spent some time at the Skip Barber Racing School over the offseason. Three Canadians are racing hard for eighth place. Brian Hart from Quebec is up alongside BC native Tristan Faulkner and Albertan Bridget Pitt wants in on this battle as well. Brian Hart is 7th in points and could jump closer to the top spot with a good run today. On lap 17, Fullerton would tag Allie Nelson in the left rear, sending her spinning to the inside. She would recover without any contact with the tire barriers, but the caution would be thrown for the first time. On the restart, Tyler Faber would quickly attack Gallo and snap the lead away. Gallo is caught sleeping there and with Pericles and others jumping at the bit she might find herself stuck on the outside line for quite a while. Ultimately Gallo would hold on to second. Faber has been unable to form a gap back to her. Off turn two Faber would understeer and in a chain reaction Pericles would get in the back of Gallo who would have to make a big save to keep going but she's going to turn this into a challenge for the lead. How about that for a stylish recovery? contact between Anderson and Nozomi behind as well. Nozomi sent to the inside. We're only 25 laps in, folks. There's no need to be this feisty. Jeffrey Finguy is having yet another strong performance today as he has quietly made it into the top five. Finguy Soitomi has shown plenty of speed this year and it seems like just a matter of time before they can finally get some results to show for it. Onboard Bridget Pitt. Running around mid-pack, Tristan Faulkner runs way too wide into the corner. Al Lagasse has to make some evasive action, and Bridgette Pitt nearly into the back of the number 32. They all keep going unscathed. Gallo back to the lead after a hard-fought battle. For lap after lap, she would get to Faber's bumper on the exit of turn two, but couldn't find the straight-line performance to make anything of it down into turn three. But now she's got it done. Caitlin Sang and Bridgette Pitt door slam off turn two. Pitt has found herself in several close calls over the last ten laps. Another huge moment there. She's holding her own though and doesn't seem too phased. 
Fred Flintstone nearly gets dumped by Wilhoit. Another huge save to avoid the tire barriers on the inside. He's compromised heading into turn three and Brian Hart gets into the back of him too. Poor Fred Flintstone likes bowling, but I don't think he expected to be one of the pins out there today. Behind them, Bouchard would get tagged by Nicky Martinez. He would almost save it, but would be interrupted by the tire barrier. A tough lick for the 037. That's definitely his day done. On the restart, Gallo would get away well. Pericles and Faber run a lower line through three and four. And ooh, more contact there between Gallo and Pericles. We're back under yellow though. Gallo's going to hold on to the lead for now. Irving would understeer off two, Sang into the back of Irving, and Pitt into the back of Sang. Sang down into the tire wall and out of the race in a cloud of smoke. Irving would make a lucky escape there to continue on, pretty much unscathed. At the restart, Pericles would again strike down into turn three, getting to Gallo's inside and with certainly a cleaner move than uh, the one we saw before the last caution. Tyler Faber looking, waiting in the wings, looking for an opportunity and trying to figure out which lane to go with. You can see some of the quirks of this racetrack as Pericles gets the better run off of turn three on the bottom of the track, but I can guarantee you that's not going to happen when he hits this bump through turn two. Gallo with a huge head of steam down the back straightaway. Nozomi, Finguy, and Anderson are waiting by close as well. These guys aren't breaking away since they're racing side by side, but the yellow's out once again. Pericles narrowly holds the lead. In a remarkable turn of events, Emmett Vanson would find himself right on the tail of Fitzwater and he would not waste his chance to get a piece of revenge. Fitzwater would spin down the track but avoid the tire wall. No love lost between those two. The top two would break away on the restart, leaving Faber, Finguy, and small Nozomi to battle it out for third position. Faber is no stranger to performing well on the short tracks. He has two wins on them, one in Vernon in 2015 and one at Flat Rock in 2016. Jeffrey Finguy, meanwhile, is trying to break his winless streak going all the way back to 2014. He came awfully close at Edmonton and he's gonna, it looks like he's gonna try it again today. Small Nozomi, a hard charging sophomore driver making her way up into fourth place on that tougher low side of the racetrack. Impressive driving from her. Nicky Martinez and to Tony Tavalaris would get locked together heading into turn three. They would spin off the track at the pit entry. Tavalaris would get a bit more damage and would fall two laps down while compared to Nicky Martinez's one lap. No caution out for that though. And Gallo looking to the inside is going to get the lead back from Nick Pericles. These two continue to battle and they really seem to be the class of the field so far in this one. Gallo is making just her third Hark start. However, she's got a ton of experience on the short tracks down in her home state of Texas. She's even her own mechanic and she's proving herself quite a force to be reckoned with. Three laps later, Pericles looking down low on the inside of the 47. Uh, he, if anyone's going to be able to challenge Gallo, it's going to be Pericles because he won the 2017 Granby race, one of the last times Hark raced at a dirt track. A large gaggle of cars racing very close to one another is headed by William Brock, Patrick Smith, and Casey Lester. Brock can't hold the momentum on the bottom of the track off that turn two bump. And Smith and Lester rubbing to the outside. Oh, Smith all sorts out of shape there. Fullerton tries to make it four wide. Damn near dumps William Brock down into turn number one. Uh, William Brock manages to hold on to it, but we've got a crash behind them. That's Emmett Vanson into the end of the tire wall there. Looks like he has some damage. A few cars collected in that one. Let's take another look. Lasavage checks up the, off the corner. Collins into the back of him, comes down the track in front of Fitzwater and Vanson. Fitzwater with a lucky escape there. Collins without any damage, but Emmett Vanson with some rear end damage. On the way back to the yellow, we're once again side by side for the lead. Gallo versus Pericles down into three. Who's gonna make it stick? Gallo with a better run on the inside. What a battle we're seeing between these two drivers today. Gallo leads at the caution. 
Soon after the restart, Pericles would try again. This time he's got Tyler Faber for company as well as we're three wide for the lead. Down into turn one, Pericles looking to push through on the midline, but Tyler Faber holding his own, surprisingly, on the bottom of the track. Pericles would snap the lead away from Gallo, who is going to have to deal with the 89, it looks like. Oh, Al Lagasse would have a left front tire go. It's possible that it's been cut from some contact. He's been in some rough and tumble racing all day, and he's going to need to pit, and he would fall a lap down in the process. Al Lagasse would re-emerge on the racetrack right in front of our race leaders, and he would not do a great job of getting out of the way. Pericles, not exerting a whole lot of patience there, sends the 32 down to the inside of the track and nearly loses the lead on the way back to the caution as a result. No damage for Al Lagasse, maybe just a little bit of emotional damage as his day goes from bad to worse. On the restart, Cassie Gerdes would, would experience some mechanical problems. She would bring it down pit road for two consecutive laps. They were eventually able to, to resolve what was going on with her, but she would fall three laps down in the process. Tyler Faber going for the lead on Nick Pericles. Gallo has to fall in line for now, and Faber is going to be your new race leader. Racing for around 10th. Benoit Lathur Irvine would get into the back of Ike Durbin, who would make a pretty solid save, to be honest. But Diego Yepes into the back of him, and that's Al Lagasse sent off the road by J.F. Finguy. Ike Durbin makes a swift recovery, only loses a few spots overall from that spin. Let's have another look at this. So on, um, on the overhead shot, focusing on Al Lagasse, Al gets on the brakes pretty good, but J.F. Finguy, not so much. Gets into the back of the number 32, sending him spinning off the track and into the outside pit wall. I don't think this race could end soon enough for Al Lagasse. That's a lap car. He's getting bullied out there. And he uh, has a little bit of a steering problem, it seems like, now as well. On board Max Anderson on the restart. He's currently running in third position. Ooh, Nick Pericles nearly into the side of the 89 there. They might have actually made some contact. Faber tried to defend low, but Pericles was already there, and Pericles takes the lead uh, as we hit around 40 laps remaining. Max Anderson trying to sneak into second as well. The final spots of the top 10 are still very much up for grabs. Irvine, the Frenchman, doing his best to hold on on the bumpy inside lane. He's had a very eventful day. Tristan Faulkner, William Duncan's protege, is holding on his own in the middle of the track. And Fred Flintstone in the infamous Fr Flintstone Flyer is on the outside. Flintstone has won before at Lucas Oil Raceway back in 2017. And he and his teammate Small Nozomi are showing that they have plenty of horsepower this season, which is good news for Fred's legs. As an Alaskan, this race is as close as Allie Nelson will ever get to a home race. She started 17th and is currently hanging in just outside the top 10. Max Anderson couldn't snap second from the grips of Faber, who seems determined to get that lead back, and he'll make it look pretty easy there by driving by the Mustang of Nick Pericles. Merely three laps later, though, we're looking on the bumper camera of Tyler Faber as Pericles mounts yet another charge. Quite a duel between these two that we've seen so far. Behind them, Gallo and Anderson are fighting for third. This might cost them a chance at inching closer to those top two. Tristan Wilhoyt looking to make a bold move, dropping to the inside to try and take sixth away from Brian Hart and Jeffrey Finguy. Wilhoyt spent a chunk of his life in Alaska, but recently relocated back to his home state of Texas. He's not going to be able to get the move done for now. Faber is to the inside of Pericles yet again. This time things are less definitive though. Pericles is managing to hold his own with the momentum he can carry on the outside. Behind them, Gallo continues to challenge Anderson for third and Small Nozomi is closing in. Soon after Faber completed the pass, Pericles would pull the crossover and more quickly dispatch the number 89. Gallo has finally separated herself from Anderson and is looking to track these two down. She's been the only other driver to lead the laps today. Jeffrey Finguy reporting a slow leak on the left rear tire of the 92. Heartbreak for that operation once again. 
He was once third, but in the last 50 laps, while trying to ride out that tire, he's fallen all the way back to around the tail end of the top 10. With 15 laps remaining, let's get a quick flyby of the field. Heracles and Faber are the class of the field. They've got a full second gap back to the others. The field is starting to stretch out over this 3 8 of a mile oval, but there's still lots of smaller battles up for grabs. Tyler Faber going back by Nick Pericles. They're catching lap cars for the first time this race. We're on the longest green flag run of the day, 30 laps and counting, and with some damaged cars and the differences exasperating over time, these lap cars are going to add a, another strategic element into how these top two race one another for the victory. With just seven laps remaining, Tyler Faber makes a big mistake and drives too deep into turn three, and Pericles steals the lead back. Pericles is closing in quickly on the first of the lap cars. He needs to get through Fitzwater quickly. Oh, he doesn't need to take him out, though, in the process. Oh, that was a close one, and Faber is going to take full advantage of that one, capitalizing on the compromised position of Nick Pericles to try and get back by. They're side by side down through one and two. Faber trying to get alongside Fitzwater in order to pinch Pericles behind him. Finally up the inside of the 59, Fitzwater not doing a great job of getting out of the way, and Pericles is right behind as well. There's now three and a half laps to go to settle the victory, and this time it's Faber who's the first one to hit lap traffic. This battle is deja vu of one of Hark's most recent dirt track races at Granby, where Nick Pericles proved victorious in the final laps over Faber and Collins. On this day, Collins is merely a lap car, though. A win here would be such a feel-good story for Tyler Faber. It was Faber's good friend John Christchurch, a former driver with Faber's team when he raced in Hark, who used some of his winnings to rejuvenate this speedway and get it back running again in the first place. Nick Pericles is going to prove a tough foe. He's led the most laps today and seems to be able to put that car exactly where he wants it. White flag is out. Pericles is going to try and pull a pinch on Faber behind Emmett Vanson, but Faber has gotten himself clear. After 50 laps of back and forth, there can only be one winner. And with a defensive line through the final corner, race three at Hay River is going to go to Tyler Faber. Congratulations to him on his fourth career win. This will certainly put him in a good place to challenge for the championship this year as well. What a race here at Hay River. 17 lead changes, only one fewer than Michigan. Nick Pericles comes home second, just over one car length back after leading the most laps with 60. Small Nozomi rounds out the podium again, second race in a row for her, maximizing the race weekend. Speaking of maxing things out, Max Anderson finished fourth. And Lucino Gallo, despite starting from pole, setting the fastest lap and leading a number of laps, uh, she wasn't able to stay with the top two and seemed to falter towards the end of the race. Brian Hart, a solid sixth, Tristan Wilhoit getting a hard-fought seventh. Tristan Faulkner finished eighth, Irving gets ninth from what was a very eventful day from, for him, and J.F. Finguy quietly snuck in a top ten. Quick shout out to Ike Durbin who climbed 17 spots from the second last row of the grid and recovered from a spin to finish 12. Small Nozomi's ever-consistent hard-charging finishes to maximize her weekends have raised her all the way to the top of the standings. Tyler Faber's win propels him to second in the standings in front of Zachary Fitzwater Sr., who wasn't able to make much progress from his mandated last place starting position. Brian Hart gains a few spots up to fourth due to his continued consistency. Lucas Knight's middle-of-the-pack finish lost him three spots in the standings. The staggered nature of the point system means that getting standout performances is more beneficial than consistently finishing mid-pack. With six races left to go, the championship is still anyone's to win. Any of the top 24 could be first in the standings after round four. Next time out, we'll be at Sutherland Automotive Speedway. 
formerly called Wyatt Group Raceway or Auto Clearing Motor Speedway. This progressively banked one-third of a mile paved oval in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan will be the last stop on the Western Canadian Tour and should provide more classic short track action.